The State Department confirming three Americans are among the four victims of a terror attack in Jerusalem. It is the city's deadliest attack in years. Four people are dead and at least seven others hurt. The two Palestinian attackers died in a shootout with police. It happened at a contested religious site in Jerusalem. We begin in Jerusalem where at least four Israelis have been killed and several others injured in what police describe as a terrorist attack. Two men armed with a pistol, axes and knives carried out the attack at a synagogue in the Hanoff neighbourhood in the west of the city during morning prayers. It's the deadliest in Jerusalem in years and is bound to ratchet up fears of sustained violence in the city already on edge amid soaring tensions over a contested holy site. Officials say the men, both Palestinians from East Jerusalem, were later shot dead by police. If you're asking me, they stabbed people once and twice or three times to make sure that they did the job. Uh, very bad, very bad. Now, police say the two attackers were uh, Palestinians from East Jerusalem. They again, they used knives and, uh, and an axe to, to attack the, uh, the, these Israelis that were in the synagogue. Now, tensions have been flaring up here in Jerusalem uh, over the past several months, really after the war in Gaza between uh, Israel and the Palestinians there. But also there's been uh, fights over religious spots here in Jerusalem. We came to pray this morning. We were coming into the into the synagogue, and we heard gunshots from downstairs, and um, you know, we heard one shot, two shots, and then a, then a flurry of shots, at least five or six or seven shots. We all ran out. We understand that somebody was killed or you know, seriously wounded downstairs. And everybody called the police, and and uh, they came about ten minutes later. And it's like I can tell you. It's not immediately known if the men were affiliated with any militant group. Hamas, the militant Palestinian group that runs the Gaza Strip, has praised the attack, however, but stopped short of claiming responsibility. In the meantime, US Secretary of State John Kerry has declared the incident to be an act of pure terror. The French President, Francois Hollande, has also issued a condemnation. People who had come to worship God in the sanctuary of the synagogue were hatcheted and hacked and murdered in that holy place uh, in an act of pure terror and senseless brutality and murder. I call on the Palestinian leadership at every single level to condemn this in the most powerful terms. This violence has no place anywhere. As I speak, terrible attacks are being committed, including in Jerusalem now, where we have learned of the attack on a synagogue with four Israelis killed. We must do something about this problem in the Middle East, this conflict between Israelis and Palestinians. But never ever accept terrorism. There is no justification for that. ...to find some form of resolution. Joining us now, Fred Flights, a former CIA analyst and senior fellow with the Center for Security Policy. So if two Palestinian cousins get hold of a gun and these meat cleavers go on the attack in a synagogue, does, does that become one of these lone wolf terror attacks or does it have the hallmarks of support from Hezbollah or one of the terrorist organizations over there? John, it's good to be here. I think these attacks are driven by two things. First of all, I think they were probably inspired by calls by ISIS for Muslims worldwide to commit acts of violence against so-called enemies of the religion. But I also think these attacks are driven by the Palestinian leadership. Now, I just listened to President Obama say that President Abbas of the Palestinian Authority strongly condemned the attacks. I disagree. He also blamed the Israeli authorities for being behind these attacks, for stoking up the situation. These attacks are driven by tensions over the Temple Mount. The Israeli government had to shut down the Temple Mount last month, 
after a rabbi who called for Israelis to have the right to pray there was almost assassinated. The assailant was killed by the Israelis, uh, and then protests broke out. And how do, how do Abbas respond? He called for a declaration of war because the Temple Mount was closed. Now, the Mount was reopened on Friday, but nevertheless, tensions are very high because of the situation. Well, what are the Israelis supposed to do in, in, you know, in cases like the uh, Temple Mount incident and this latest attack? Well, there's been a long time understanding that people of other faiths could visit the top of the Temple Mount, but they could not pray there. Now, there are some Jews who believe that that's unfair, that that shows a lack of tolerance for their religion. They show tolerance for, for Islam. Islam should show tolerance for, for their religion. I think this difference can be worked out, and I, I believe that's what the Israeli government is trying to do, but it doesn't help when, when the head of the Palestinian Authority calls for a declaration of war of an action that the Israeli government had to take because of an outbreak of violence. Well, let, let's frame this in, in a larger context, really. The, the gruesome murders that we were just talking about come as a new study reveals that terror attacks were up sharply last year, rising 44% from 2012, killing 18,000 people. What's behind this rise, Fred? John, there are many on the left who say that we're no longer at war with terror, that, that, that we're not at war with radical Islam anymore. I think this is stunning evidence that we are. Now the president early this year said that ISIS was a JV terrorist group and in August he said he didn't have a strategy to fight ISIS and I think this administration has been in denial about the threat from terrorism, and the threat from radical Islam throughout its administration. This is simply more data that this war is ongoing and I gotta tell you John when the data comes out for 2014 these figures will be much worse. We have seen another ISIS beheading. Uh, there are a couple of, of you know, Western hostages still left in ISIS hands. I, I just wonder, you know, has, has that group lost its ability to, to sway the, the, um, the response, I guess, by, by continuing to kill those that it holds? ISIS still thinks they get propaganda value out of beheadings. It's hard for rational people to understand that. But this video needs to be studied carefully. I've read some expert analysis that said it was not as well produced. And it may indicate that ISIS is on the run or they lost the location where they were able to film the last video. There's also some talk that they're running out of Western hostages. And I, I hope that that's true. Well, I mean, we all hope that's true. We know that they are holding a, a young woman, a 26-year-old woman who, you know, went over to help and, and, became, uh, and became hostage. Um, but they are aiming these videos at, at more supporters, trying to recruit more people who want to do the same kind of thing. That's what we find so unbelievable in the West. It's, it's hard to understand, but they are finding that these acts of horrific violence have an effect in recruiting some uh, dispossessed and, and, and uh, troubled individuals who, for some reason, see siding with ISIS as, as, as the way they want to lead their lives. It's, I think it's important to launch a campaign on the internet and, and in the news media to explain to these people what ISIS is really about. But I think there's always going to be a small number of individuals who are susceptible to this type of propaganda. Fred Flights is a former CIA analyst and a senior fellow at the Center for Security Policy. Fred, thank you. He was asked about the attacks in Jerusalem today. Let's listen. It took place uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, we know that two attackers senselessly and brutally attacked uh, innocent worshipers in a synagogue uh, during their morning prayers. Obviously, we condemn in the strongest terms these attacks. Uh, a number of people were wounded uh, and four people were killed, including three American citizens. So this is tragedy for both nations, uh, Israel, as well as the United States, and our hearts uh, go out to the families who uh, obviously are, are undergoing uh, enormous grief right now. Uh, Secretary Kerry has spoken to Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, President Abbas has uh, strongly condemned the attacks. Uh, tragically, this is not the first loss of life uh, that we have seen in recent months. Too many Israelis have died, too many Palestinians have died. And at this difficult time, I think it's important for both Palestinians and Israelis uh, 
to try to work together to lower tensions and to reject violence. The murders for today's outrageous acts represent uh, the kind of extremism that threatens uh, to bring all of the Middle East into uh, the kind of spiral uh, from which it's very difficult to emerge. And we know how this violence can get worse uh, over time. But we have to remind ourselves that the majority of Palestinians and Israelis uh, overwhelmingly want peace uh, and to be able to raise their families. Uh, knowing they're safe and secure. The United States wants to work with all parties involved uh, to make that uh, a reality and to isolate the kinds of extremists uh, that are bringing about uh, this uh, terrible carnage. Breaking overnight, a deadly terror attack shattering the peace of early morning prayers inside a Jerusalem synagogue. They used axes and knives to attack the people. Police say two Palestinian men armed with knives, axes and a handgun entered the building in an orthodox neighborhood in West Jerusalem. The assailants traveling from East Jerusalem, killing four Israeli civilians and injuring six others, including two responding police officers. This video shows Israeli police trying to enter the synagogue to stop the attackers, who were then shot and killed by police. Israeli authorities calling this one of the deadliest terror attacks in the city in years. What you saw today is slaughter of innocent people while they're praying in a synagogue. If the world doesn't unite against terrorism and gives zero excuses for terrorism, this will haunt the world. A spokesman for Hamas quickly praising what happened as justifiable revenge for the death of a Palestinian bus driver found hanged in his bus Sunday. But Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas condemned the attack, as did Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, saying Israel will respond with a heavy hand, his office posting on his official Twitter account. This attack, the latest and most violent amid months of soaring tensions in the holy city, with a wave of attacks and kidnappings in recent weeks. Israel's Prime Minister condemning what he called the cruel murder of Jews who came to pray and threatening to respond harshly. Two Palestinian cousins stormed the synagogue during morning prayers armed with meat cleavers and a gun. They killed four people praying inside before police shot them dead. Connor Powell live in Jerusalem. He has the latest on this. Connor. Well, John, Jerusalem is no stranger to violence, but even by recent standards, today was a particularly brutal attack. And as you said, three Americans were killed. Another individual from Britain was also killed, and the violence showing no signs of letting up. As Jewish worshipers in Jerusalem gathered for morning prayers, the growing violence between Israelis and Palestinians arrived at the doorstep of the Harnoff Synagogue. According to both Israeli police and eyewitnesses, two men armed with axes, knives, and pistols stormed the synagogue early this morning. They began stabbing and shooting people just as they were beginning to pray. Most were able to escape, but the attackers started to slash and shoot. At least four people were killed. Several others were wounded in the attack. Israeli officials say the two attackers were Palestinians in their 20s from East Jerusalem. Clashes between police and protesters erupted in their neighborhood soon after. Today's violence is just the latest in a series of attacks that have some fearing an outbreak of widespread violence not seen here in a decade. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that Israel will respond harshly to these terror attacks and he is blaming Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas for inciting the violence. The problem here is that uh, security officials say that these appear to be individual attacks and individually planned and that they aren't linked and their security officials here in Israel actually disagree with the Prime Minister about whether or not the Palestinians are inciting the violence. The larger issue is how to make it stop. Today Prime Minister Netanyahu has ordered that the homes of the attackers be demolished. Whether or not that will prevent future attackers it isn't clear but what we do know John is that the tension here in Jerusalem continues to escalate
And the White House is just out with a statement from President Obama strongly condemning the attack, as you would imagine. Connor Powell reporting live from Jerusalem. Connor, thank you. The trouble has been you've had these extremist statements uh, from Islamists who come with this sort of irresponsible language uh, about the Temple Mount. Uh, and my Prime Minister has said uh, uh, unequivocally there will be no change to the status quo, the religious status quo on the Temple Mount. This is just going to add to the tensions in Jerusalem which have been simmering for weeks now um, with a few other attacks have taken place um, in Jerusalem, in the east of the city, also in the West Bank, in Tel Aviv, a total of six Israelis killed by Palestinians in those. But this is really the deadliest attack that there has been in Jerusalem, the deadliest attack of its kind for many years now. It can't be that people pray here and are murdered. People take the train and are murdered. People in the bus are killed. Last week a soldier. These things can't be. It's frustrating to be in your country, your own city, your own prayer and your synagogue, and get killed. Inside the synagogue there were wounded victims, some wounded from gunshots and some injured by the attacker with an axe. The scene inside is very disturbing, with lots of blood. Inside there were another three dead. This really continues a drumbeat of deadly violence. What is happening there, Mr. Ambassador? Well, I think several things are significant. Uh, first, we know that Hamas has applauded the attack, has not taken credit for it. Uh, but I think we should watch developments there because when Prime Minister Netanyahu says there will be a harsh response, obviously the question is harsh against whom? And if there are links that this was directed or inspired by Hamas, then I think we know what the Israeli retaliation will be. Uh, second, this attack against a synagogue in a, a Jewish neighborhood of Jerusalem, not in uh, East Jerusalem where the uh, Arabs live primarily, but, but an attack in, a, in an otherwise uh, peaceful neighborhood, I think intended to convey uh, the terrorist message that no one is safe uh, anywhere in the city. And then finally, uh, we don't know whether the fact that the, of the dead three are Americans, one British apparently, whether that was a motivation, in other words, was this an attack on foreigners as well, or was it simply an attack uh, on a synagogue that tragically killed four mm. foreign citizens? Uh, but I think the implication here is uh, is very clear that the prospect of, uh, of further negotiation between Israel and the Palestinian Authority is pretty close to zero. Yeah, meet cleavers in a gun. Israel has done a very good job in recent years at keeping suicide bombers out of Israel proper. That's why you go to a meat cleaver as brutal as that is. Because your sources in the past for killing are no longer available. Right, and I think the fact that, uh, that they're willing to use knives and axes uh, to have literally blood on their hands as they kill their victims uh, is related in part to what we see in ISIS beheading foreigners, including three Americans. Uh, what we saw in uh, Britain with uh, drummer Rigby being killed uh, uh, in a knife attack on the streets of London, what we've seen in this country with a beheading recently, uh, that, that, the, that the terrorists are uh, clearly intending to show not only are they willing to sacrifice their own lives, they're going to commit their terrorist acts in the most bloodthirsty way they can. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can blink this reality anymore. This isn't workplace violence. Uh, and whatever the provocation that the Palestinians may point to, there is no excuse, period, close quote, no excuse for killing innocent civilians. Yeah. And the Iranian nuclear talks continue today, too. Very keep, dangerous. Keep, keep a half an eye on that as well. Ambassador, thank you. John Bolton in New thank York you, with Bill. us.